So my name is Joel Rodrigues. I'm a developer at CPS, a UK-based company, and um, you have my, I think you can see on that screen, um, my Twitter handle and my blog. So the web part that I have here is basically to confirm again how easy it is to show the Microsoft uh, MS Graph client that we can use in SPFX since 1.6. Uh, and it's just a simple demo that retrieves the teams that the user is a member of, and then the user can switch on and off the option to open on client um, on the client app instead of the um, browser. Let, I'm just having some technical issues because the presenting is getting underway. I can't switch those. Oh, there you go. So. As I mentioned, the web part only has a property here, so by default, oops, if I click here, and I can't see. If you, if you unpin the, yes, exactly, that, that should get that one away. Cool. No, it doesn't go away. Patience. Okay. Come on. Ah, there you go. Ah, I can't get my mouse closed. Okay, let me move this. Below it. Um, so if I click, uh, so the, the web part doesn't have a new UI because for the sample I don't thought I didn't thought that was relevant. Uh, so it's just rendering a list of links. You click on one, and it opens by default the general channel for that theme. So you can see here you are on demo to general or demo to general. Come on, yeah. So if I then switch this to enable that, and I click on demo one, for example, I can have this pop up, and I want to open on the app. And there is an issue at the moment, and I can guarantee you this was working before. Sometimes I was trying this before the call. It seems like it not always switches to the correct channel at the moment in the client app. I will try to have a look on that and fix any potential issues if there, there, there is one. Um, but that's basically it. Um, this is done by generating different URLs when you enable this option. Um, so in, in theory, if I uh, go to Team 4, you should, after a slight delay, see the switch for the channel for the general, the general channel of the team four, which is not happening, and I have no time before the call to really find out why. Uh, so if I jump into the code, uh, the web part is quite simple. Um, so on the web part, you can see that mainly all you need is importing the graph client and initializing it. Um, so I'm doing the initializing here on the init method of the web part. And after that, I just pass it to a team service, which does the calls. You could potentially avoid this. Vardaman published a really nice blog post about that. Um, so you could potentially avoid having to pass um, the client to the service like that and make it more uh, have completely separation between the service and the web part. Um, after that, I, on the web part itself, I only have a switch property, which you saw, and I basically render my React component in here. Um, there is a load function, which uh, happens on the client mount and component mount and component update uh, when the property is switched and uh, basically retrieves the themes for the user which we can go there and if we basically calls the service which oops uh, on the my teams is as simple as that uh, notice I don't have any selects for properties, that's probably something you want to add for production code, even though the properties for um, the teams are very limited. But still, if in the future 
uh, the, t the graph team decides to add a whole bunch of information there, you probably don't want to retrieve all that. Uh, and we have a similar method for the channels. Uh, in this case, we pass the team ID, which is required for the call. And again, I don't have any select here, which uh, you should add for production code. Uh, if you look at the sample in GitHub, I created a pull request before the call. Well, actually, probably during the call, where I removed um, another method that I had here to get the tenant ID, which I was using to open in the client app. Uh, I found out I don't need that. So the way this works is um, when you click on one of these links, oops, I'm going to do the request and get the channels for that um, team just to prevent, if, so if you have a large number of teams, you don't want to do all those requests in advance. Uh, so if the user um, clicks there, you get the channels for that team. In this case, for the sample, I'm just getting the first channel, which is the general one, and I redirect the user to that channel. If the property to open in client is enabled, the channel contains the web URL property, which actually has the URL you need for that. And to show you how the URL looks like, if you click on one of these and open in Teams, if you then go to one of these channels and click get link to channel, that's the, sh the link you get on that property. And it's the one I'm using to redirect the user to the correct channel, which, funny enough, is not working at the moment. <laughs> Um, so that's one, another difference from the current version in the dev branch of the samples. So whenever the pull request is accepted, you will get those updates, but you can see on the pull request the changes I did. Um, the other option, if opening client app is switched off, but which is by default, uses a different URL to open on the web browser. Um, to, to be able to retrieve this information, we need permissions to access graph, um, which I declared on the web part. So, so you may wonder if you haven't used this before, so how do I know where to get this from? A very simple place to look for is on the graph documentation. So if you go to, oops, wrong link. Um, talksmicrosoft.com and then go to graph. You have a view and reference here at the bottom, which I have open here. In here, you have basically a nav left navigation, which is awesome and lets you ex go down the levels of the elements you want to, or basically en the endpoints you want to use. In this case, if we go, for example, to channel and I want to list channels, it tells you straight away what permissions you need. Uh, the same for team to retrieve my teams. It's as simple as this. Just look for the action you need or the data you need. And basically, you can see here the permissions you need. So in this case, I need user read all, user write all. And we did, you, we need the same, but for a group to retrieve the channels. Yeah. So that's what I have in my web part. If you want to test the web part before, basically when you're doing development and you don't want to install it, but you want to run it on Workbench, you can use the Office um, 365 CLI. I have the commands here. It's extremely, extremely simple to add the permissions in advance. Uh, you don't need to deploy the app and it's just awesome. When you, you deploy the app or when you enable the permissions, you on the admin portal, you can go to app API management and you can see the API requests approved here. So when you do it through the CLI, they get automatically approved. When you do it through the app, and I'm going to show you now, I just package the app in advance. If I add it to the app catalog, you can see on the app that you have 
the permissions you need here. And you should see, yeah, there you go. So we have the same duplication here. So if, when you use this page, you will wish it had a bit more functionality, things like reject multiple requests in, par in parallel. Um, one important thing is when you go here and you try to approve it, this, uh, this permission does, is not specific to your solution. It applies to anyone, any solution on the tenant or any script that runs on your page. As soon as you enable, basically you open the door, anyone can use it. Uh, so there's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, hopefully, my personal point of view is I wish this would change in the future, and, but let's see how things go. Um, just one important thing to keep in mind, and um, if you work, for example, with clients, make sure you always make this very clear to them, because if they find out later and uh, they were not aware when they enabled permissions, they may go a little bit crazy. Um, so be fully transparent in that this scenario. Um, so you have other issues if you try to approve. You will, so basically anything that was approved, you will fail. Uh, there is a few scripts I've seen online to clean up duplicated requests. You may want to have a look at that. So, um, Joel, Joel, just to, uh, yeah. I think I think we can through the the basics. There, just a few few comments on that one. For, first of all, on the on the permissions, uh, if you would use the isolated web parts, um, then you are able to target the permissions to a specific application. So, isolated web parts are actually in GA starting from 1.8, uh, so a few weeks back. So that will actually then grant you and give you the capability of not doing organization wide permissions, but also a, a solution specific permissions. Now. Uh, um, and then the, the UI things uh, are pretty horrible. We are aware of them. Uh, they should be getting cleaned up for 1.9 release. So we're fixing and, and making uh, giving some love in, in, in quotes uh, for this page uh, for the next releases as well. So because there are uh, bending. The fact that you can actually have multiple times the same permission here is really annoying. So Yeah, thanks for the isolated permissions. I clearly missed that. No yes, worries. No worries. Joel, did you have anything to still add here? Just double checking. I think uh, no, no, I'm done. Center. Okay, cool. And thank you, Joel. Okay. Uh, really good demo. Uh, before HS actually starts, so on Joel's uh, thing, it's not a massively complex web part, but I, I think those simple web parts are super useful to understand the basic scenarios because then you can actually go to the solution and sample and see. Okay, now I get it, and then I'll decorate that and make it pretty more prettier if needed. But it, it's really a kind of a classic scenario where we want to use Microsoft Graph, we want to get access on the, in this case, the Microsoft Teams data through the, per, the me graph endpoint, and then rendering that and combining the SharePoint and Teams experience. So super valuable stuff as well. Mm -hmm.